Hi, my name is Ashley and welcome to my channel. Today is the second day of our Halloween sewing marathon and I'm going to be sewing this adorable pumpkin Hugo handbag. Um, I'm calling it the Hugo handbag light. So I didn't do it with a crossbody strap or any side hardware. There's no pockets on the back and there's, um, there's no pockets on the inside either. So it's just the basic shell. My daughter asked for it to be a makeup bag. So I figured this is perfect and she loves orange. It's her absolute favorite color. So some of my materials, um, my orange and black vinyl. This is glitter butter from Weft and Warp. My lining material is Theratox from Fabric Therapy and so is my binding, that's from Fabric Therapy as well. Um, and I did use the candy corn variegated thread on this, and I love how it pops on top with the black zipper gussets. Um, that is from Wizardry Stitchery. And then for interfacing, I used the Decoville Heavy as directed in the pattern. But then I used, for the very first time ever, the adhesive foam from Fabric Therapy. And friends, it's amazing. You gotta get some. Um, it is never going to come off of your vinyl. <laughs> there, the one downfall, there's no ability to reposition this stuff. Um, but it's great. And look at the structure that it gives this bag. I mean, this is all just foam up here. That's it. So those are all the modifications I made. Thank you so much to the designer for allowing me to create this tutorial with your pattern and for participating in our sewing marathon. Make sure that you stick around for all of the other amazing videos today. Everybody's worked so hard to make this day great. Um, and then we do have one more day of marathon next Saturday as well. So that's everything. If you find this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and let's get started. Okay, so really quick, I'm gonna go over some of the pieces that I have here. Um, this is going to be my handle and I have not applied any of my Decoville Light or my Decoville Heavy yet, just so you know. Um, so this is gonna be my handle. Here is going to be my smaller side of my zipper gusset, exterior and interior and the larger side. Um, for the smaller side, I've already adhered my foam. And for the larger side, because I'm gonna be sewing the handle on, I have not put my foam on yet. And then I have the base of the bag for the exterior and the interior. And then this is my front panel, along with its piece of foam and the lining. And then for my back panel, I have my exterior I have stuck my foam on already and my lining. Okay, so the other couple of things you'll need is this piping. Um, I am using foam welting cord. It's great like cordage and it's two and a half millimeter or three thirty seconds. And you'll need a long piece of zipper tape number five and two or one. Since I'm making this a simplified version, um, that's all I'm gonna be using. I do have a full bag tutorial that I will link below as I'm sure I said already um, so you can see everything being made there. Okay so I did go ahead and do my applique face um, beforehand. I did use some variegated candy corn thread. I thought it would look super cute. Um, this was all reverse applique so if you see oh that's where that went. I, I spent too long looking for this guys too too long and I sewed it into my piping seam this was supposed to be the piping cover for the back side so this piece right here anywho I just cut a large piece of black out and I used some double-sided tape um, and then I placed it on the back and I stitched around all of the openings on the front that's it and then I applied my piping. Right now it's sewn at a quarter of an inch. So if you see, this is about where the piping ends. The end goal is to have it nice and tight with the stitch right up against the piping. So I have another about eighth of an inch to go. 
which is perfect because my final seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch. Right, so I've already applied my piping to the back panel and my thumb. So the next thing I'm going to do is just quickly baste this on for my lining. Okay, so if you see, I just rough cut this lining. Um, and all I'm going to do is lay my exterior on this. Of course, since it's stripes, I do want to kind of sort of make sure it's straight. And I'm going to lay these wrong sides together. And I'm going to just baste around the edge at an eighth of an inch. Okay, so this is what we have right now. I could have probably pulled this a little bit tighter, but it'll be fine in the end. So now I'm going to go around and I'm going to trim down my lining to match up with my exterior. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just make sure that you don't trim anything off of your exterior by accident. And my stripes look nice and straight. Perfect. So this is my back panel. It is all ready to go. I'm going to set this to the side. Okay, so next I'm going to take my handle piece and I'm going to remove my double-sided tape paper on the back. And as I'm sure I said earlier, I am making mine different um, than in the pattern because I don't personally enjoy turning this handle. So this is how I like to make it. You can definitely make it just like she writes for in the pattern. So I'm just folding these edges in and I did, um, probably should have put some double-sided tape here too. Oh, we're in it now. All right, I'm gonna add a little more double-sided tape now. So once you have the rest of your double-sided tape on, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this one over because this is going to be the piece that you actually grab on the handle. So I don't want it to be raw edged. I mean, it can be, it's not the end of the world, but I'd prefer if it's not. Then I'm gonna take off this piece of paper backing and I'm going to turn everything now. And this time I'm gonna fold it over nice and tight around the Decoville Heavy. Okay, once you have everything folded over, this is what you should have. And so it should be double folded on this part right here. And then what I've done is I've drawn a line on the front with a removable tool that matches up with where the double fold starts. So what we're gonna do is we're going to stitch all the way around the perimeter um, between these two lines. And I'm gonna wipe away the markings. I'll grab a, like a wipe for that. And then what we also need to do is we need to make sure that we stitch this down as well. So you can put one or two rows of stitching if you want. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do two rows and I'm just gonna feel for the edge here. So I want to make sure I catch it. Oh, perfect. I was afraid I didn't catch it. So see how I did that here. Um, and it actually, it looks kind of even. So I'm just going to stick with the one row. All right, let's move on. We'll put this to the side and we'll work on the zipper panels next. So I have my exterior zipper panel. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the paper backing on the double-sided tape. 
and I do have this zipper cut significantly longer than what we need. So I'm just going to line the zipper tape up on top of the double-sided tape. Once you have the zipper put down, go ahead and grab your lining panel piece and we'll do the same thing, right sides together. And I did mark the centers on these um, just so I could try and match them up evenly. So this is right sides together with the exterior panel. And when I placed the zipper on, I did that face down. So the teeth were facing towards the um, right side. All right, and then I'm gonna flip it over and my lining is cut wider and longer than necessary. So we're gonna do a 3 8 inch seam allowance right down the side with the zipper tape. But first I have to change my zipper probe for that. Once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and pull these apart, place them wrong sides together, and we're going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the seam. Top stitch. And then you can go ahead and pivot and close up the other three sides. Okay, that's what you'll have now. So you can go ahead, if you did like I did and it's too wide, Go ahead and trim down all of your excess lining now. I love how this looks. So beautiful. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so for this side, we're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing, except for the very last step. We are not going to match up these um, raw edges and stitch them closed. So we're gonna leave these open. And I'm just gonna cut my centerpiece in my lining again, because I trimmed it down, so I cut it away. We wanna make sure that everything is staying centered and lined up. If it does happen to get misaligned, it's not a big deal. Um, you could definitely fix it after the fact just by pulling the zipper apart and reinstalling the zipper pulls. So I'm just checking to make sure these edges are mostly aligned, as aligned as possible. Then I'm going to put my other lining panel on, stitch them together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and then I will open it up and do the top stitching, but only along the folded seam. Don't top stitch close the raw edges. It's beautiful. So this is what you should have. So now I'm going to grab my handle 
and we're going to start stitching it down. Okay, so we're going to attach the handle um, and we're gonna do it one side at a time. So on the full pattern, um, you would be putting connectors here and all kinds of other things. But because we're doing this like the light version, if you will, I'm not putting any connectors on. So I made two marks, three eighths of an inch away from the fold. And then I'm going to place a piece of double-sided tape down the center on the back where I haven't stitched at all. Do the same on this side. And then I'm gonna put my 3 8 of an inch markings here as well on this end. Okay, so we're going to flip these apart and make sure you have your lining out of the way that you're only attaching the handle to your exterior. And again, I have not put my foam on my exterior yet. Um, and that's just because I don't want to sew through it. It is likely to gum up my needle. Okay, so I have the first one on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to top stitch just where there is no stitching already. So I'm gonna come up this side and I'm gonna come across here and back down the other side. So this is what you'll have. See how it's just attached here, which is why we want to make sure this panel is out of the way because I don't want to be stitching through here. I mean, you can, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It might even be a little cute, who knows, but I don't want to. So go ahead and turn it around and we're going to get ready to line up the other edge. So peel back the paper backing on the other side. And again, making sure you are matching the edges of your handle with the edge of the zipper panel. So now we're creating this bump in the handle. So see the handle should be 3D now at this point. So we're going to do the same exact thing. Go ahead and stitch it down. So this is what your handle should look like. This is your grab handle and it's securely attached on both sides. You can go ahead and put some double-sided tape on if you, or um, some rivets on if you wanted. I'm not going to, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna close up the open edges of this now. So let's do that real quick. Oh wait, no, I'm just kidding. First I'm gonna put my foam on, which is going to be, <laughs> going to be difficult now that I have this handle. Uh, it'll be fine. You really didn't want to put this on beforehand though, I promise. So I'm going to place this as close to my seam as I can, just to hopefully keep it out of the seam on the other side. In case you missed the beginning, this is Fabric Therapy's self-adhesive foam. Uh, and as you can see, it is quite sticky. So this is a strong hold. It's not going anywhere. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the open edges closed. Okay, real quick, I'm going to put both of my zipper pulls on before I trim down my zipper. Okay, and 
then I'm going to put the other one on. I find these... Oh, what happened? Oh, boy. That zipper's no good. Hold, please. And just make sure they look good. There's no bubble or bump or anything. And then you can go ahead and trim down your extra zipper tape as well as your extra lining if you have them have any. All right, so this is our completed zipper panel. I love it. I love the stripes with the Halloween colors. It's beautiful. Okay, so now we are going to attach the bottom panel. So what we're gonna do is take our bottom panel and put it right sides together here with our zipper panel. And if you use the correct seam allowance for your zipper, you should match up no problem. And I'm gonna attach my lining and my main panel separately. The final seam allowance is going to be 3 8 um, The first piece I put on, I'm gonna attach it at a quarter inch. Back stitching over my zipper. Then I'm gonna take my lining piece. Oh, are my stripes even gonna match? Whoa. Sort of, kind of. Yeah, all right, cool. Um, I'm gonna take my lining and attach it as well. This time I'm gonna make sure I do 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, now we can go ahead and open these up wrong sides together. And I'm going to match up my centers here for the base and just give it a little tug. And then I'm going to top stitch here. Oh, I love it. I love this thread with it. There we go. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Even not too bad on the lining. All right, so we'll go ahead and flip it around. And this time we're going to have to kind of fold it on itself in order to bring the panels together, right sides together. So match the other ends up, right sides together. And final seam allowance is still three eighths of an inch. See how I have this like bubble here? Just kind of squash it down if you need to. You will need to when you bring the lining around. Okay, so see I've squished that together. Bring my lining up and then go ahead and attach this at three eighths of an inch. Once you have that, we're going to go ahead and open this up. And I'm going to do the same thing, match up my centers, and then pull everything tight and top stitch that panel seam on the side. Once I have it clipped together, then I do flip it back wrong side out. It just seems to be easier for me to stitch, top stitch that way. Okay, once you've got the top stitching done, I'm going to go ahead and close the edges up here. I know I end up snipping the gusset anyway in the end, but I feel like it just helps me keep everything in place in the meantime. Flip 
paper right side out and take a look. Ah, oh, look at that. I didn't even do it on purpose, but look at that. It's pretty darn good stripe matching. So this is our completed gusset. Um, I already have my bottom and top center snips. So that's all great. Um, the only thing I have left to do is attach the little applique stem to the pumpkin face and then we'll move on to final assembly. Okay, so the next thing I will be doing is putting my little pumpkin stem on. So what I have done is I just poked out a hole here where the tip of the stem goes and then I'm just going to make a dot with a removable tool and I have my little stem here. So I have stitched, I stitched all around it, but I stitched and tied off this whole top part um, per the pattern. And then I unpicked these stitches down here and these are the stitches that we're going to re-stitch now. I stitched them so that I could do my edge coating and everything would stay together. If you do this and they're not together, then they, they end up spreading apart and it looks really weird. Um, so let me grab a little bit of double-sided tape. So I'm going to take the paper backing off. And you can make the stem face whatever way you want. It doesn't matter. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and place the point of the stem right there where my silver mark is. All right, so now I'm going to stitch down just where you see the little holes from where I previously stitched. So I'm gonna go back and through the same holes that I started in the first time. And I did leave my tails nice and long. So I'm gonna pull both of the threads to the back side and tie them off. Okay. Now that I have my little stem on here, I'm going to go ahead and put my foam on. So we'll flip it over and peel off the paper backing of this ever so sticky foam. Like, be really careful. <laughs> be careful with it. There it does not feel as though there is an opportunity to reposition it at any time. Um, so, yeah. Ugh, it sticks to my fingers. Nancy at Fabric Therapy got an amazing product my friend okay so once the foam is on we'll go ahead and place these pieces wrong sides together and again since it's stripes I'm gonna kind of try to get the stripes straight and we'll base this in place at an eighth of an inch And don't sew over your stem. Okay, these are basted together. So, ooh. so one more time, I'm gonna trim this down to match up with my main panel. Don't cut your main panel though. All right, so I'm gonna be using this pre-made binding um, it does fray a tiny little bit. I don't remember where I got it from. It either came from Fabric Therapy or Wept and Warp. So I am going to be using this. Uh, it's nice and light and thin. It is not adhesive binding. That is my favorite, but I only have seven eighths for adhesive in the stripe. Um, I might see, but I, I have a feeling seven eighths is going to be a touch too small because these seams get pretty thick with this binding or with this um, piping. What we're gonna do is we're going to 
attach the back panel first. So I've gone around and I've clipped little snips in my gusset, just about an eighth of an inch or so. And then we're going to match our centers. So here's my center on my gusset and my center marking on my top panel right here. We're gonna match these up at the top and the bottom and clip everything together. And when I am attaching the gusset to the main panels for this bag, because of the vinyl piping, I like to use these clips instead of my regular, like wonder style, wonder clip style. Um, they're a lot, they can accommodate more bulk. Okay, so I have all of these clips on. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and sew this on. Um, my final seam allowance is going to be 3 eighths of an inch. And I am going to open the zipper. Um, I don't know that it really makes a huge difference, but I'll take what I can get. I feel like it helps a little. It certainly doesn't hurt, that's for sure. I decided I am going to give the 7 8 adhesive one a shot um, just because I, I really like the adhesive binding. Everything stays in place all by itself. Um, the other stuff is beautiful but slippery. All I'm going to do is peel this backing and you can trim the seam allowance if you really want. I, I don't see a reason to at least not at the moment. Um, I'm gonna start up at the top. Normally I start at the bottom, but with this bag, you have that, um, that piece covering up. Oh, this isn't gonna be wide enough. Um, you have that piece covering up the binding or the piping down there I'm sorry and I don't want to add any more bulk there than we already have so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to line this up on one side right with my stitching line or as close as you can get to the stitching line the goal here is to cover both stitching lines this stuff is also super sticky. This stuff I know for a fact came from fabric therapy, so. Seems like she's uh, on her adhesive game. Okay, once you get back to the beginning, go ahead and overlap it just a little bit. And now we're gonna work to stretch it over the seam and get as close to covering up the other stitching line as possible. I'm not overly concerned if I don't get it all covered. Um, most people don't ever even see the binding on projects. So see, like we're, we're gonna come up about an eighth of an inch short, which is why I was a little hesitant to use the seven eighths 
pipe or um binding on here but it's adhesive and i really like it i do believe they are if not already have reproduced in one inch just so that it's able to be used in a wider array of places so once you have your binding on I'm going to go around and I'm just going to get as close to the edge of the binding as I can and stitch it down. What I'm kind of doing is I'm, I'm grabbing the edge of the binding with my stiletto, just tugging a tiny little bit to pull it just a little bit closer to covering up that seam and stitching. And it seems to be working. I do know that some people prefer to stitch the first time around at a quarter inch and then the second time around, they attach their binding with a three eighths of an inch seam so that you're like pretty much guaranteed to cover your stitching, obviously. I don't enjoy doing that though. So I don't mind if you see a tiny little piece of stitching here and there. Now that turned out pretty darn good. Look at that. I mean, nothing you're really ever going to see though once the bag is turned out. So I'll show you guys. So see how it looks. And this is what people are going to see when they open it and look in. I mean, that looks like I didn't miss any stitch covering. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this back out and we're going to place the front panel on in the same way. So I'm gonna attach it at a quarter inch first. Then I'm going to attach it at three eighths. Make sure we get up nice and close to the piping. And then we'll put on our binding. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna speed right through it and then we'll turn it all out together. I will say when you're doing this one, if your bag has pokey outy bits like my stem, make sure they stay tucked in. You don't want to sew your pokey outy pieces down. That would be sad. So see, I'm going to make sure I tuck this in. You can, you know, be rough with it. Don't, you're not going to break it. And then I'm going to match up my centers see how it's pointing down make sure it doesn't move from that from there you don't you don't want to sew it into your piping or final seam or anything you want it to poke out all right so let's go around i'm going to base this down
am approaching the stem, so I'm gonna personally hang right onto it so that it doesn't fall in there. Make sure you grab onto your little pokey outie bit again when you come around the top here. see how it turned out and this one I say is fairly easy to turn because um, it has such a wide opening really hard not to crinkle the decoville heavy because it sometimes just doesn't uncrinkle ever and then you'll just kind of work the stem back and I just go around on the inside of all of the edges and push everything out so I'm gonna shape up the binding and then just make sure everything is flat and that's it um, if you made a Hugo light version with me you are done so we are all done thank you so much for joining me in the second day of our Halloween sewing marathon Make sure that you stick around for all of the rest of the amazing YouTubers and bag makers that are on today. 
and show them all the love and support because everybody has worked really, really hard to make this marathon a success. Thank you so much to the designer for allowing me to create this tutorial with your pattern. Your pattern is beautiful and keep your eyes peeled because this designer may be having a new pattern in the very near future. So you don't want to miss out on that. All right, that's it. If you found this tutorial helpful, please go ahead and give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.